Uh, Lee Chow, first of all, I mean, Amazon, among others, has made you a very rich man. So why are you biting the hand? You're not even a Hachette author. Well, I love Amazon. I have uh, Amazon as a whole, fine. I, I've grown up with Amazon. They started around the same time I started. I've got a lot of good friends there. But the point is exactly that. That there are, if you have a good friend who is misbehaving, mm -hmm. you don't immediately shoot them in the head and bury them in the woods. You take them aside and have a quiet word with them. You say, come on, pal, you're out of line. Shape up and behave properly. And that's what these authors are doing. Me and the other 900 authors, that's what we're saying. Uh, do you buy the argument at all, though, that this is just the version of the pre-Second World War move to paperback no, I mean, uh, e-books? Amazon released all that stuff, and it's very, very disingenuous. And in fact, there is a, a very specialized branch of science that you can examine these propositions with. It's called arithmetic. <laughs> and their, I, their number's about uh, uh, how many people will buy it at 15 bucks and how many people will buy it at 10. I mean, Amazon does not run two parallel universes in which they sell books at two different prices. The best they can possibly be saying is that for every 100 people that will buy it at 15 bucks, there are 174 mm -hmm. that will buy it at 10 bucks. And what publishers actually do, of course, is they sell the 100 to the people prepared yeah. to pay 15, yeah. then they sell the, to the people prepared to pay 10, and they make more money than Amazon s says they're going to make. But do you think, I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about the argument that more people will actually get to read books in a minute, but do you actually think that Amazon is squeezing the author? They may be squeezing the publishers, are they squeezing the author? Well, inevitably, by, uh, by an inevitable, inevitable connection, they are squeezing the customer, most of all, by depriving the customer of what the customer wants. And this is the very but bizarre thing. what does the thing. customer want? The customer wants the books that she wants to read. And Amazon is not delivering them right now because of this row. The yeah, what they're going to doing, a go collab. slow on Hachette authors, aren't they? Yeah, they came out at the weekend and admitted that they've taken steps to reduce the supply of Hachette books. And so the customer who is waiting for her favorite book is not getting it, which is very weird and for then, a very customer-centric But this is company. a bargaining tool with Hachette. Yes, yeah, an absolute bargaining chip. They're using the authors as collateral damage, they're using the customer as pawns, and you've got to ask why, what's behind that? But if more people read because of e-books, now, I mean, let's take you, your new book is coming out next month, mm. you, you, on, it's 20 quid, but on Prime it's 10 quid, and, uh -huh. the, and the Kindle one offer will be eight pounds and three pence. Right. You know, if someone can't afford it at 10 or 20, they can afford it at eight pounds and you'll get a new reader. I don't think there's a significant uh, number of people that are gonna say eight pounds is that much better than 10, having bought the machine in the first place for however much that was. I don't think that's a significant difference, really. Well, is the difference now, though, that people might not like the Kindle as it stands just now, but technology moves so fast that sometimes you think that perhaps within months or certainly within years, they'll produce something that's more akin to the paperback experience but on Kindle. Well, we've already got the paperback experience. It's called the paperback. And I think this is Amazon's problem. Amazon is fantastically ambitious. They want to change the world. They want to dominate. And the Kindle simply hasn't. It hasn't worked as well as Amazon wanted it to work. It's become, you know, America's market is about two years ahead of the British market. And the verdict is in, in America. Mm -hmm. And to put it in the vernacular, Kindle is so 2012. People tried it out back then. Some people liked it, some the, people but, didn't. But the, Most people were but, completely indifferent. And it has settled into a good, solid niche, which is fine from a business point of view, but not good enough for Amazon. Amazon if, wants to take over the but world. But if something comes up that is genuinely much better than you would say Kindle, then you would agree that authors might be being just a little bit Luddite. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't care how, how it's delivered. I mean, they can hire Scarlett Johansson to go around and whisper it in your ear. That's fine for me, as long as you hear my story. But the point is that the books cannot get any cheaper than they are now. It's not really feasible to make them any cheaper. They're extremely cheap right now. Hey, Charles, thanks very much.